Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. We are very fortunate to have with us on today's program Sheikh Habib Ali from Canada. Welcome to the show, Sheikh. Thank you for having me. It's just a pleasure to see you again once again uh, during this pandemic. I remember we had your interview last year, it was so amazing inspiring so thank you for doing this it is a pleasure and we are very fortunate to have you on this show and for our viewers out there sheikh habib is an islamic scholar and presently he is the executive director of the one love family services in toronto canada so stay tuned as we talk to sheikh habib about his activities and community services, etc. He is a person that wear many caps when it comes to community services and education, etc. And I must say this before we begin talking to him. He also met the Prime Minister of Canada in person, in person, because I see him with that photo all over the place and we'll be asking him a little bit about that meeting and his connection with the prime minister of um, canada inshallah so stay tuned so sheikh uh, habib ali before we get into all your community leadership services and i know you do a fantastic job you are always on 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 par with all these things going on and hence we are very 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 fortunate to have you with us and to talk a little bit about these things i'm sure what you do will definitely motivate a lot of our viewers worldwide a lot of our viewers worldwide so let's begin with your background a little bit where you're from um i know you are a graduate of darul Uloom, dearband tell us a little bit and just a few words of your background so our viewers would have a, a better idea on your i can't say history but your bio and who you are and where you're from yeah well thank you um i am i i'm honored to, to be talking to an alumni from darlin in india because of yourself being a graduate there and uh, i grew up i uh, was born in guyana i grew up uh, in guyana um i attended uh, the Queen's College High School, which is the top high school in Guyana, Queen's College. Yes, when you and talk of Queen's College in Guyana, that's like you have made it at the top there, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm grateful to my parents for supporting me to go to school. And then I had an opportunity with Maulana Shiraz um, to go to India and study Islam. So at the age of 18, I actually uh, traveled to India and I originally studied um, Islamic studies in Arabic language at the Falahi Darain, that Keshwar Islamic uh, Institute. And then later on took admission to Deoband, the top university in the traditional Sunni world in South Asia. And I graduated from there in 1992, I think. And then returned to Guyana where I served for a number of years. And currently, I live in Canada, in Toronto, where I continue to serve the Islamic uh, cause. So how many years now have you been in Canada? Um, I'm here for the last 17 years. And I have worked with several Islamic schools and charities and Islamic institutions. And uh, currently, I'm a chaplain, both in the prison as well as in long, long-term care home. That is interesting. Um, tell us a little bit about, I mean, I, so many things you do, you know, if it wasn't the pandemic, I would surely be visiting you in Canada there to, to view and, 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 and meet you and participate with you in some of these community services that you do. I mean, I check it out all the time. Uh, we are so close, but yet so far, geographically speaking, However, may Allah continue to bless you in all these different fields that you serve. Tell us a little more about the being a chaplain in the in the police department there in Canada. So we're talking about Toronto, right? Yes, Toronto. Um, 
Well, you do amazing work um, going to Trinidad. So many years I've been to Trinidad and I know you're popular, you're well known and well established for the work you do in Trinidad as well as in Florida. I had a, my beginning of Islamic uh, path actually started in Trinidad uh, with half a spatel in a ijtima in Monroe. That's where I was in, inspired and by Mona Abu Salam giving a speech. Um, currently in the prison system, there are several chaplains, both uh, Christians and non-Christians. So I'm the Muslim chaplain for the last number of years. And that's where we help uh, inmates reintegrate to society successfully. I support them with their religious accommodation. I support them with their um, counseling and uh, Islamic education. So it's a very interesting path that uh, I intersect with daily with uh, people from all over the world, people of all backgrounds who are incarcerated. But Canada gives you a second chance. Um, there's no death penalty in Canada, so everyone gets a chance to come out. So it's an important work to help the inmates reintegrate into society as safe. And that's why we started a One Love Gala about nine or 10 years ago to acknowledge and identify and to uh, use their stories as an inspiration to young people who may get into trouble with the law, with violence, with drugs, etc. So the one of Gala basically every year, people from all backgrounds of all faiths and ethnicities, we actually do a Gala where we give them an award and uh, get them to share their stories with us on stage. So that's the, the kind of uh, ongoing work I've been doing with when it comes to those who are incarcerated. So tell us a little bit about how did you get into the correctional institution as a chaplain? What's that process? How did that happen? You know, that's that's an interesting point because our viewers who are from all different parts of the world, uh, the East, the Middle East, uh, Africa, Caribbean, America, it's interesting to know a Muslim and Islamic scholar, you know, getting involved in the correctional institution as a chaplain, which we don't have many of that in North America. We don't have many of that. You can check the few on your fingers. You see what I'm saying? So I think that our viewers would be very interested in knowing how you got up there and how you were able to achieve and accomplish that. Yes, uh, well, I have a master's in Islamic theology, I uh, graduated from Deoband, and uh, so when I came to Canada, I was uh, working as a teacher from Islamic school, and I was approached by members of the Canadian Council of Imams that there is an opening position um, to assist an already existing Muslim chaplain who visits the Muslim inmates in the prisons out of Toronto in the federal institutions, so I applied and uh, when I got through with it, <laughs> I had cold feet. I don't want to go into the prison. So I took a bit of time to enter. Uh, my colleague, uh, Yasin Dwyer, he's the one who accompanied me and gave me the necessary training along with other chaplains. Uh, I remember Mr. Kierkegaard, who was a Christian chaplain then, and he encouraged me and uh, pushed me towards uh, this uh, field. And I'm ever grateful to him and all those who supported me over the years. So that's how I entered it as a chaplain, as a prison chaplain. That is really, really, really phenomenal. I mean, you know, it's just a, you know, a, a very few people in North America who are able to, and especially with all the screening process uh, after 9-11 and the whole international terrorism technicalities, uh, I know that in North America, especially Canada and the USA, they do a lot of screening when it comes to a Muslim being a chapel. And Allah has uh, definitely blessed you and chosen you to fulfill that responsibility. And I pray that Allah continues to keep you on that as um, you have been chosen to do. That's a very, very, very... Um, uh, very powerful responsibility. Now let's uh, hear about you, Thank you being a chaplain and in this um, where you are right now. Tell us about that now <laughs> and tell us the name and, and what it is all about and what you do here. 
So as a multi-faith chaplain uh, for a long-term care home, we facilitate the religious and spiritual services that uh, seniors who are living in the home, they may require the Shabbat service, uh, Catholic mass, Islamic program, Jummah prayers, Hindu prayers. So that's a, 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 as a spiritual care care uh, coordinator, that's what I do. As an example, today is Rosh Hashanah, and uh, I had to help organize the Rosh Hashanah celebration for the Jewish uh, residents. Um, so uh, it's a matter of uh, journeying. Chaplaincy is uh, journeying. In, in Arabic, we call it sahbat, where the companions have been described as sahaba because they had the companionship of the Holy Prophet Muhammad in peace. So the chaplaincy is about presence. It's a ministry of presence. It's a ministry of companionship. It's a ministry of uh, journeying with that person. It's not proselytizing. It's not converting. It's not uh, intervening uh, with one religious uh, thoughts and ideal ideologies and culture, but allowing yourself to facilitate and help that person in their journey. Sometimes we have atheists who do not need a religious service. They just need someone to talk to them with a friendly voice. So that's also the presence that we offer as a multi-faith chaplain. And that goes for any institution in the world that where chaplains work, um, prisons, police, the forces, hospitals, universities. Chaplaincy is about expressing uh, empathy and compassion and being non-judgmental. That's why we have a successful one of gala where people from all backgrounds and people who have committed crime, people who have been innocent, people from different ethnicities and, and orientations and backgrounds come because it's a space where we do not judge, but we encourage. And I have named it after the Bob Marley song, One Love. Um, so the One Love song of Bob Marley is what I have named the One Love Gala after um, because I think it expresses the concept and the core value of Islam. We create you from nations and tribes so you may know each other. So it's about uh, knowing each other and uh, getting to know your neighbor rather than uh, trying to convert someone or judge someone for who they are. Before we go on, a, on the break, um, on a short break, Sheikh Habib, do you have uh, Muslims in that facility? Yes, we do have, yes. Uh, uh, there, there are Muslims in all long-term care homes uh, and different uh, chaplains uh, serve them based upon their needs. Oh, that is interesting because um, I suppose with Canada having so many Muslims who have been um, immigrants so many, 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 many years ago, um, they became senior citizens, so now they would be in this facility. Is that what we're saying? Yes, as much as um, the Muslim culture is to take care of your parents and your loved ones when they become older and uh, at home with the family, but uh, that's not always the case uh, in North America. Um, people have to work, they do not have um, caregivers, they cannot afford caregivers. There are different factors. So you will find more and more in the immigrant community, um, seniors and parents and loved ones, but great care and dignity and compassion and respect. Yes, yes, taken, yes. So tell me, tell me on another note, um, like at what age do these people come in there, these senior citizens? Generally? Uh, they, come, they come in uh, uh, mostly uh, as early as their 60s and, and later and later age, 70s and 80s. Um, I've met people in the hundreds as well. Wow. And in general, approximately how many people do they have on that facility in total, in that facility that you are in? Uh, there are hundreds of them. I don't know the exact number, but there are hundreds of them. Oh, okay, okay. So that, of, uh, that is interesting. Well, Sheikh Habib... I have a, a lady who's not in the facility. She's outside, but I used to help her years ago by volunteering, by driving her. She's 95 years old. And she has all her faculties. And she calls me the other day and said, uh, when it's my turn to go to a, a home, I'll call you because I believe that uh, 
the service is excellent. Wow, wow. Well, we got to go on a short break. When we come back, I want to also ask you, how did you get into this uh, long-term care home as a chaplain? You know, this is very interesting for the world to know as a Muslim here in North America, Toronto, Canada to be specific. Um, you are serving as a chaplain in the police uh, department, uh, correctional Not institution. Not the police. The correctional police. institution to be more yeah. direct, yes. And um, yeah, because you're right, the police chaplain is a whole different territory to yes. the correctional institution. I have institution. a few uh, Muslim imams who are chaplains in the police and they're doing an excellent job, yeah. S superb. And now you are here in this uh, long-term care home facility. So when we come back, we want to talk a little bit about how you got into this service as a chaplain. This is indeed a blessing. And then we want to touch a little bit on what motivated you on some of your books. I see that you are also an author of over 26 books. I mean, it takes a lot of time to do that. 26 books you're an author of. So when we come back, we'll continue this conversation, inshallah. To our viewers out there, stay tuned. And when we return after the short break, we will continue this conversation with Sheikh Habib Ali from Toronto, Canada, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikma TV for khutbahs, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67. Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ya ayyuhar Rasul Ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik Wa in lam taf'al Fa ma balagta risalatuhu Very deep Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam To spread the message of the Quran And he told the Prophet And if you do not spread the message You did not fulfill the mission of the messenger So you and I are followers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. Three dollars, ten Quran, thirty dollars, a hundred Quran, three hundred dollars. Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. Once more, it is indeed a pleasure to have with us on today's program Sheikh Habib Ali from Toronto, Canada. And we have been talking with him before we went on the short break on a wide variety of. Uh, different ideas and his expertise and his achievement and accomplishment as a chaplain there in Toronto, Canada. So stay tuned as we continue this conversation with Sheikh Habib Ali. Yes, Sheikh. So again, it's a pleasure. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're doing an excellent job. Thank you. Well, it's a blessing to hear that from you. You know, we have that in common of you being a graduate from Durban. You know, that's the barakat, that's the barakat. And I feel very relaxed talking to you. We came from uh, uh, the, the same origin. <laughs> yes, I was always wanted to meet you and I heard about you growing up in Guyana and traveling to Trinidad and then studying in Durban. So when I finally met the legend at the, uh, in New York at the Islamic conference hosted <laughs> by Sheikh Rafiq, I was so happy. <laughs> Now you make me feel very old, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> also, wh when you were in Ghana, you heard about me while you were in Ghana? Yes. Oh, that is interesting. That is interesting. Uh, mashallah. Well, it's really a blessing. And I am very, very, very impressed with um, the kind of things you are doing in Canada and your achievement and your accomplishment. That is very, very unique to many scholars and imams in today's time. A lot of them were doing it, but not as much as what um, you are doing there. 
So tell us, how did you get in as a chaplain in this facility? Yeah, so to, during the pandemic, uh, lots of things were shut down and uh, we couldn't uh, visit the prison. And uh, I'm part of a multi-faith organization called Canadian Multi-Faith Federation. Mm -hmm. They were originally the Ontario Multi-Faith Council that would train and uh, grant certification to chaplains in Canada. So they had an opening for a chaplain um, in the long-term care. Uh, there wasn't a chaplain during the pandemic for the last year. And uh, people have been passing away. People need uh, services, people in palliative care. Mm -hmm. So I applied and um, I was successful um, in the position. So prior to myself, another imam held the position as a multi-faith chaplain. And uh, he's a young uh, graduate uh, um, from um, so I, uh, Emmanuel College. So years ago, I helped uh, in the foundation of a Muslim chaplaincy program at Emmanuel College here in Toronto, at the University of Toronto. So I'm glad that I see a number of young imams who are coming from studies abroad or even locally. They enter that program. As a matter of fact, I was at the graduation for a young um, Hafiz and Molana from England. He is, he is of Guyanese background on, on this weekend gone. And he applied for that uh, master's in the chaplaincy at Emmanuel College. So there are a number of such people who are taking on that program. Mm. So the reason why I'm saying that is that uh, the chaplain before myself, he graduated from that program. He's serving in the long-term care home as a multi-faith chaplain. And so I'm just blessed that I was given this opportunity to continue doing something like this. I think you are very, very motivational in... Um in encouraging and motivating some of these young Islamic scholars to become chaplains. And I, that is a big, 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 big need and necessity nowadays, especially in North America, especially North America, where there is a lot of red tape in becoming a chaplain in some of these facilities. So fantastic. You have pioneered a superb job and responsibility there, Sheikh Habib. So let's move to another topic now. I saw that you received a humanitarian award in uh, 2017 for your community services. Tell us about that. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> um, that was a Junction Award. And last year I got one from the bigger award for humanitarian services. Um, basically, I'm um, grateful for the persons who recognize my humanitarian work. I've worked with uh, many international charitable organizations in the past and uh, local Canadian organizations helping people in, in Syria and in Haiti and Guyana and Canada. So we have uh, recently been doing a food bank here in Toronto, uh, giving out uh, food hampers every month and I thank you, Sheikh Shafayat, for your support for the food bank. No, and, whatever. Uh, we, and uh, we, um, so yeah, so based, based upon that, uh, I was recognized for the humanitarian award and um, for the work that we do. And it's not myself, it's an uh, entire team of volunteers, family and friends, donors, um, the clients, the organizations, they're all Muslims and non-Muslims, they all come together to support this cause of giving out food hampers during the pandemic. Um, last weekend, we did 650 hampers, and we call it the One Love Table from the One Love uh, Song of Bob Marley, because we believe in inclusivity. We find a lot of people, sometimes they say, oh, we can only give it to Muslims, or we can only give you if you give us your information, or, oh, we will not deal with the homeless, or oh, we will not deal with people who leave the prison, oh, this person, they're not dressed properly. Why are they coming to the mosque? We wouldn't give them a hamper. All kinds of stories we hear in the in the past. So we thought that uh, come as you are, as Rumi, the famous poet, said, come as you are. So our motto is that come as you are. Uh, we do not judge you. Once you need a hamper, and we believe you, and we believe that people want uh, you know, line up in the, in the cold here, winter in Toronto, uh, one hour, two hour or drive so far leave their home um, to just to try to sneak a hamper. I don't think that is people's intention. 
People have lost their jobs, international students, refugees. This week passed, Canada received a new coverage from Afghanistan after the fiasco and the tragic uh, incident that happened in Afghanistan. So we have reached out to them as well with clothing and with hampers and food. So different people we have been serving. So um, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Um, talking about all of that now, it brings me to a point before I forget, and I need to ask you about this, and I always wanted to ask you about this on uh, social media and our interview on Hikma TV and wherever this goes throughout the world. Tell us about your meeting with the Prime Minister of Canada, because I see you got this beautiful photograph with you and him. When did this happen? How did this happen? Where did this happen? Oh my God, I, I don't think I wanted to talk about that. It's a picture I got with him um, um, on E-Day, the Prime Minister of uh, Justin Trudeau. Uh, currently there's an election going on and uh, uh, every every, every uh, party is canvassing and hoping to win on September 20th. But uh, Justin Trudeau has been uh, there for the Muslim community when we have been attacked with Islamophobia in the Quebec uh, mass massacre, in the Abzal family that were murdered in London recently, and many other stories. My own good friend from Guyana, he was guarding the food bank and the mosque at the IMO last year, September, around exactly this, this same time, September, um, this week, last year, and he was murdered by a racist. So over the years, um, the Prime Minister stood up with Muslims, and um, during this pandemic, he has given out uh, um, funding and help and relief funding for Canadians. So there are good things that he has done. So I was, when I, uh, I saw him in Toronto on E-Day and it was uh, at a Caribbean festival. And I told my friend who was an MP, Sean Chen, hey, I want a picture with the prime minister and he got it for me. So since then I have um, kept, kept that picture and posted it on my social media. So, so should I say that your photograph with the prime minister has him keep on winning elections because he's with this big shake of Toronto, Chaplin, interfaith scholar. It gives that strength to the Muslim community and that support to let them know, you know, that um, Prime Minister Justin is not just a, a politician and a newsmaker, but he is real and he goes out there and supports all communities especially the Muslim community. And I mean, we do follow him and we really, really appreciate the kind of services and the way he goes out and is outspoken when it comes to Islam and Muslims. So you guys are very blessed to have a prime minister like that in Canada. Yes, and uh, many imams have pictures with him as well, so I'm not only Right, one. right, but listen, that is interesting and that is fantastic. And I, I, I wanted to share that with our viewers that, you know, you, Sheikh Habib Ali, is a man that uh, was in the company of the Prime Minister Justin of Canada. And that is big time and that's good to know that you are up there with your community work and you are recognized nationally in Canada. Tell us a little bit about your books. What motivated you to write 26 books and how you know how you went about doing that? Well, I must say, um, when I was in Ghana, I started writing a newsletter, a uh, monthly newsletter called Unique Remedy. Unique and, Remedy. Uh, unique Remedy. <laughs> and um, my friend Shamal and George Doug used to print it and we used to share it. So later on, I collated some of the articles that I've written and put it in a book form. And uh, Zainal in Trinidad, your good friend, uh, Meccan Printers, he was the first to print my first book. And since then, I have continued uh, to compile my articles and on, or on different Islamic topics the, and over the years. And that's how I was able to publish uh, several of these books on Islam and poetry and to faith, uh, living in Canada and uh, different uh, topics that uh, come to mind. Currently, I'm the president for the Pakaraima Writers Association, which is a Guyanese diaspora writers association in Canada. And we host um, twice or thrice a year a meeting of poets and writers 
um, from Guyana, Trinidad, Barbados, USA, Canada. So this uh, this Friday actually we'll be having our, our next support tree um, online uh, event. And uh, so my writing has been um, supported by the Pakaram Writers Association over the years in Canada. Although I am Muslim and I write about Islam and uh, other members, they're from different faith backgrounds or different uh, intellectual backgrounds, they write about different things, but together we have supported each other and we have assisted others as well to get published, to write, to get edited, uh, to promote. So that's the awesome work. And thanks to the founder of the Pakarama Writers Association, Janet Naidu, who believed in me. So I'm presently holding that mantle. Listen, that is again phenomenal. And you have me smiling because, again, that's something else we have in common. Not only are we graduates of Darulam Deoband, uh, India, but yeah, I saw that you also did a diploma. You got a diploma in journalism. And that's something when I was studying many, many, many years ago, 40 years ago, I saw the need for doing journalism in the field of Dawa. And Alhamdulillah, we have that in common. Journalism attached to Dawa and interfaith. And I love that. I really love that. And it has been a little while now since we really wanted to get you on this show. But I know you have been busy and we've been running around. But Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, listen, nothing happens before it's time. Yes, yes. And Allah made this happen. And you had, you, you had me smiling. And congratulations to your Al Hikmah magazine that has been worldwide read. It oh. has some very, very erudite uh, scholarly articles as well as uh, relevant to the layman. So your journalism and layman, it comes with a great barakat. Alhamdulillah, you know, Al Hikmah is, 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 um, what would I say? It's Al Hikmat's baby. <laughs> the magazine, it's the baby of Al Hikmat. And that was the origin of the whole organization called Al Hikmat Services. We originally started, and as you started with your, your paper in Guyana, what did you call it? Unique what? Unique Remedy. Unique Remedy. We started with Al Hikmat Magazine, Wisdom, which is now approximately 38, 39 years in existence. Alhamdulillah. Allah has blessed us and um, it's all the barakat and the blessings from Allah. But there was something you mentioned and I got to share this with our viewers before we go on a short break. We got to go on a short break. We've been talking for more than 15 minutes again and then we'll come back after the short break. But there is something you spoke about poetry and you spoke about poets and you spoke about one love, you know. And I'm there smiling because, you know, in Urdu, in Hindustani, there is a connection with love and poetry, you know, yeah. meaning when a person is in love, they become a poet. Because love leads people to poetry. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, there's a famous saying that <laughs> one of the signs of knowing that a person is in love is when they speak in poetry and when they <laughs> sing a lot of poetry. Uh, hence, the, uh, the, the Shair and the Urdu says, that is why Meto Shair Ban Gayaho. That's why I became a Shair because of love. But I love that about you. You are in, you are involved in this one love organization. You guys are invo in, involved in a lot of um, love organization, serving people, community services. Listen, that is very deep, and that is something that is missing today. You know, good lyrics, good good words kind words love and i have seen that attached to the kind of things that you do and i mean uh, i'm sitting back here and saying subhanallah look at the connections <laughs> hence you got all this barakah it's the one love it's all about um, bob marley's one love it's about poetry yeah. listen you may not probably realize how deep that is but that is very deep sheikh habib very deep the connection of writing journalism interfaith one love listen allah has blessed you and um, i want to tell our viewers this stay tuned when we come back we'll continue this conversation with uh, sheikh habib ali from toronto canada he's an islamic scholar for those of you who have just tuned in he is an islamic scholar 
from Toronto, Canada, involved in so many different things as a chaplain, books, he's an author, interfaith, etc. So when we come back, we'll touch a little bit on his interfaith activities before we conclude the show, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom, to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmah TV for khutbahs, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Bismillahi Rahmani Rahim Ya ayyuhal Rasul Ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik Wa illam taf'al Fa ma balagta risalatuhu Very deep Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam To spread the message of the Quran And he told the Prophet And if you do not spread the message You did not fulfill the mission of the messenger So you and I are followers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. $3, 10 Quran, $30, 100 Quran, $300. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Who to Global Issues on Al Hikma TV 24-7 online. Uh, for those of you who have just tuned in, we have been talking to Sheikh Habib Ali from Toronto, Canada. He's an Islamic scholar, a chaplain, and someone who is involved in a lot of community services, charitable services, as well as interfaith services. So welcome back to the show, Sheikh. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yes, it's our pleasure also, and especially with us having so many things in common, it's really a blessing, alhamdulillah. So as we are more or less in conclusion of this program, uh, I would like to ask you a little bit about your interfaith activities. What motivated you in getting involved in interfaith? Because of the fact that, you know, we don't have too many of Diobandi scholars uh, or that line who are more into the, the chaplain thing and the interfaith thing and you are very unique you're one of those they are I'm not saying they aren't there are a lot of them but not many not many who are involved in interfaith and, and so many other um, community services that you are involved in in Toronto, Canada so what motivated you in getting involved in interfaith there? Well, I think I have been uh, involved in the places in Guyana and then subsequently in Canada and other parts of the world that, um, like yourself, you, you, you converted to Islam. You were uh, pl planning to become a minister. Um, and when I interviewed you, you shared that <laughs> very unique story. My mom uh, was Hindu and my father was Muslim. And I grew up with Christians. I went to a Christian school and... Uh, so <clears throat> interfaith was already ingrained in my uh, existence. And uh, when I got the opportunity, to, <clears throat> I was invited when I came back from studies from Damon in Guyana to <clears throat> join an interfaith group that was fighting against the violence at elections in Guyana. So UNDP had invited several um, <clears throat> religious leaders in Guyana for an interfaith dialogue of how we can uh, let our communities know that we are one people and we should not be practicing racism and fighting and killing and being violent to each other. And I, I joined that. Uh, there was some pushback from some members of the community, but I continued doing that. And I continue to do that in Canada. And I think um, the verse of the Quran that I quoted earlier, which is often quoted, We were created differently so that we may know each other. The Ta'arafu is an important aspect of interfaith dialogue, interfaith advocacy, social justice work, whether it's on Black Lives Matter, whether it's indigenous children, whether it's on, on HIV, uh, <clears throat> whatever, anti-poverty, whatever work we do every day in the interfaith community. Um, I spoke at the Department of World Religions, for example, 
on the, the work we do in the in communities uh, with other interfaith individuals. Uh, that's, uh, that is not to convert anyone. That is not to belittle anyone's religion. That does not make us feel lesser as a Muslim. We do not lose our identity as a Muslim. It is an important that we may know each other. And I will give you one example. Um, as, uh, I interviewed a lady, uh, Elizabeth Green, on my podcast recently. And uh, she um, stood up for Palestine. She's a Christian. And uh, she studied the, the Quran. She studied the life of Prophet Muhammad. And every time she called the Prophet Muhammad, she said, I'm peace. Right? She's not a Muslim. <clears throat> but it's to show you the respect that, that people have. Um, not everyone is a racist. Not everyone is an Islamophobe or, or, or a homophobic or, or anti-Semitic or xenophobic. They are good people in the world. But <clears throat> they do not have the information. They do not have the awareness. And when they get it, they just run with it, they defend it, um, and they explain to others. So <clears throat> I'm grateful for the opportunity that I've had <clears throat> with Interfaith. I'm currently um, uh, part of the Abraham Festival for the last 15 years. It's an organization in Peterborough in Toronto that, um, in Ontario rather, that Jews, Christians, and Muslims come together every year to talk about each other's religion by visiting each other's places of worship. And also we fundraise for a cause and we pick a, a theme every year. And that has been going so well where, as an example, when the mosque was firebombed in Peterborough, the synagogue, which is part of the Abraham festival, opened its doors for Jummah prayers. When the, when the mosque was attacked, the church raised money to help rebuild the mosque, right? When the, when the synagogue was attacked, <clears throat> the mosque and the Christians came together to support it. So this is a, <clears throat> an important aspect of interfaith dialogue that I've seen happens all the time. And uh, I'm just grateful that um, I've met many Dayman scholars and, and Maulanas and ulama who are um, very richly and endowed in interfaith work. And uh, I, I know that um, there is much more to be done in the world when it comes to interfaith dialogue. Yes, and that's uh, another thing that <laughs> we have... Including yourself. <laughs> huh? Including yourself. You're an interfaith advocate and you're a Dayman scholar. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And the, the, the reason why I mentioned that is that, I, as I said, I know we have a lot of our Diabandi scholars who are involved, but um, not as much as um, we expect. And, um, and, and just to stick a point here, if you think about it, Sheikh Shafai, think about this. Mahatma Gandhi studied under Marana Hussein Madani in Deoband. He wrote the seer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he joined the Congress. And he got the ulama of, of Deoband to join Congress. So when you think about it, the origins in India, apart from Hindus and Muslims living as brothers and sisters, is that politically and Islamically, uh, Maulana Hussein Madani and ulama of Deoband, they <clears throat> established a foundation of interfaith, right, uh, as a tool of social justice in India. And uh, when I was in Tabriq uh, uh, Marcus in Islamadine, I remember someone saying something so beautifully. Malana Yusuf um, Kandlawi used to say, when he saw an Hindu person passing in front of the Marcus, he used to say, Yeah, Allah ke bande ja rahe. Yes. Yeah, Allah ke bande ja rahe. You know, so he used to say, That's, There goes the servant of Allah, right? So we, <clears throat> we are, you, human beings are the children of Adam. We are the children of Eve, right? We are the children of Adam and Eve, right? No, that is that is so right, and uh, a lot of people really don't don't know that that the Deobandi scholars uh, worked together with Mahatma Gandhi, and they got together for independence uh, in India, and they did so many sort of intellectual interfaith activities um, a hundred years ago, and and they were the leaders. But anyhow, as we conclude, I wanted to share, that's the third thing you said, that your mother came from Hindu background. And, you know, that, 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 that's the third thing. We got the Diobandi connection. We got the journalism connection. And I also got a lot of my maternal and paternal um, relatives and aunts and uncles who come from Hinduism and Christianity. And that helped me from my original days before I went to study also in getting a better understanding of Christianity and 
Hinduism and different faiths and their background, which led me to study more on different faiths and to do a lot of community work when it comes to interfaith and bringing communities together. So we really got a lot in common. We really got a lot in common. And I pray that Allah continue to bless you in all the things that you are doing there. You're doing so many things and you've been chosen in so many different fields across there. I know that keeps you very yeah, busy. That keeps you very busy, Sheikh Habib. I can understand what it is like uh, getting involved in all these community activities. You know, once upon a time, I used to be very, very, very busy in these community things. But now I'm kind of getting more into media now. And I'm still doing all my interfaith and all the community services, but more on a lesser level physically. I'm trying to use media to promote the activities. You see the point? I'm doing more promotion of the activities, you know, leadership training and encouraging people to go in a different level as opposed to me physically running around all over. I'm trying to get people more to learn more about in the faith and promote more about community services. And hence, we run this show to promote people and support people who do community uh, services. I know we did not get a touch on your charitable services and community services, but maybe in another interview... Yeah, I, mean, I did talk about it. Okay. Yeah, so maybe in another interview, we'll go more in details. Uh, we know about the food bank and all these other feeding programs you run and the hampers and all these things you do with organizations there for, for communities and uh, Muslims and non-Muslims, of course. But in another show, maybe it will be a pleasure to have you come back and we can get more into your charitable services and the organizations that you are involved in. It was really a blessing, a pleasure to have you with us really interesting really motivational to our viewers there worldwide and as we conclude we just got a couple of seconds uh, you got a shot i just want to say assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters family and friends in trinidad and tobago um all the all the best and uh keeps and i pray for your safety and your health and your safe and your and prosperity during this very trying time in trinidad and tobago and the pandemic Wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Sheikh Habib Ali. And to all, all our viewers out there worldwide, uh, it has been a pleasure having you on this show and um, blessing to have Sheikh Habib Ali with us on this program. We have learned a lot. We have been motivated and reminded a lot about community services. So always stay tuned to Alikma TV 24-7 online. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.